Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Detroit Sports Sit Down. My name is Tom Murphy Jr. I've got Dan Murphy and Joel Perry here with me. And oh, baby, we were so close to having such an exciting podcast about how the Lions are just taking over the NFL. We can't quite do that, but it's gonna it's a little bit close though to that because our Lions are not completely terrible. And that we, <laughs> we definitely learned that on Sunday. Can we get a can we get a banner for that or what? The yeah, Lions well, no, aren't are, terrible. They're not terrible for sure. <laughs> and in fact, they are like a team that's like in this. They are in this. Four weeks in. Two one and one. Two one and one. Better than we all thought they would be. I don't know. Who, about now you, we all, I don't I'm think we all. About time. Tom, you had them a little better than us, but not overall. I didn't think it would be four and zero or nothing. There, there, now, and if you look back, there is a chance that this team could be four and zero because obviously they tied week one, one weeks two and three, and in week four they were uh, a six point dog in their home turf. We could also be zero and four easily. Easily, <laughs> easily 0 and four. Isn't I mean, that the NFL though? Yeah, I guess a couple plays here or there does decide a game. A lot of the games. Yeah. So they're probably right where they should be. So all right. Let's start it off like this, man. Where are the Lions? And where, more importantly, where are we with the Lions? I want to, I'll start it off because I, uh, me and Courtney, we, we watched the game at home and we were just emphatic. Now, we have red zone, so you always got to flip back. You know, you flip back and forth. I never watch commercials, so NFL, you might as well just. I, I don't know how, how, how they would do that, but you just flip back and forth. You're watching these games. But but I stopped caring about everything else is what happened. I stopped caring about Red Zone. This game got so excited. Did you stop caring about fantasy? That's the, that's the true question. Even, well, I, yeah, kind of. Really? Like, kind of. Okay, okay. I mean, look, and plus, it, 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 it was still intense, man. And, yeah, you know, there was some flipping back and back, but... We were never on red zone too long because you always had to get bad because the next play was going to be big. the 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 game was exciting and and it wasn't exciting like oh, it's dragging back and forth but it's close it was every play like people are out here making plays and uh, you heard all this hype about Kansas City you know what Kansas City is yeah they're they're a Super Bowl contender for sure and they came. In, into the fourth field, and, and, and the Lions fans were they were making noise. So, Dan, how excited were you watching this game? Was this one of the most exciting regular season Lions games you've you've watched? Well, it was surprising to see how well they were playing, especially early when they jumped out to a ten nothing lead. But because uh, it, it just felt like Kansas City was going to come in and might kind of just kind of humble them, you yeah. know, and kind of bring everybody down to earth. And, Especially okay. with Slay out. Yeah, with Slay out, and you, Stafford was a game time decision. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and then he was just, breaking yeah. earlier this, just earlier in the week. Yeah, man. with an injured hip, he thought he wouldn't be able to move around very well. No, he thought he kind of felt like and he kind of went into this game. They were already two zero and one. He kind of felt like, you know, just be competitive and be happy. And they were a heck of a more, you know, a lot more than competitive. They they outplayed the Chiefs really yeah. for most of this game. Um, you know, a couple plays, you know, didn't go their way. You know, a couple fluky, crazy plays that we'll get into didn't go their way. But uh, for the most part, they they outplayed the Chiefs and really held Mahomes in check for most of the game. Which they they you go back to last year, Patricia kind of put the game plan together to how to stop the Rams. They didn't have the players to do it, but he had the game plan. And I think a lot of teams are going to go back to look at this game plan that Patricia had in for this game and say, okay, this is this is a way to kind of keep uh, Mahomes in check, which they did for the most of the game. But at the end of the day, the Chiefs still came out, you know, came out on top. But man, it was it was definitely the game of the day, and it was definitely one of the more exciting Lions games we've seen in a while. Yeah, I just want to break down some of these stats. Time of possession: Lions, thirty-three minutes fifty-four seconds. Kansas City Chiefs, 26 seconds, six, 26 minutes, 6 seconds. First downs, 29, 29. Eight rushing first downs for each team. 16, well, this doesn't have CBS stats, but basically even pa- passing first downs. Oh, the, the, there's penalties. The, the, okay, the penalties were, were even. I see what's going on. Every like I, The point I'm making is like, even just on the first downs, 
the time of possession, like everything is so close. Third down efficiency, four of nine versus five of 13. Total net yards, 438. Like I don't even got to say which team is which because it's just, it's all even. 4338 mm-hmm. or, or, or four, 438 net yards versus 447 net, net yards. The Lions actually won, won that stat. Rushing yards, this one blows my mind. 186 rushing yards for the Lions. Yeah, anytime so, you can run that many yards, it's it's going to help your team. It yeah. helps your defense. It helps your quarterback. It helps everybody. Yeah. So to to run for 180 yards, that was one of my big takeaways of the game was our rushing, and we also averaged 5.3 yards a carry. So anytime you're you know you're averaging that, that's huge. And my other big takeaway was um, Coleman and and our. Um, our defensive backs that we really thought were, were weak and with the injuries throughout the game, just how, I mean, we did let up 34 points. Um, one was a defensive touchdown. So just uh, my big takeaway was Coleman. He was everywhere. He looked like a beast, like like a top corner. Yeah. And um, just just the whole unit together worked, played really well. And even the defensive line, we didn't have any sacks, but – we had pressure. We, I felt like he had pressure on him. Uh, he, I know Mahomes didn't have any deep throws down the field. It was only like his second game ever where he had he hasn't had a throw like 15 yards downfield. That's my big takeaway. It's just the defense in general. We finally saw them step up and play, play a, a good game. And yeah. I think it's because of the run game, which lets them rest. Yeah. Listen, um, and a big overall point about that is the defense did play so great, except for. The last two minutes, Dan, and and as good as I felt about this game and watching this team and and, and, and just how great they played and, and how fun it was to watch this football game and how intense it was. Even after Galladay he, he got that touchdown and there was two like two twenty something on the clock and I had that feeling, I'm like, man, I think the Chiefs are gonna come down and score. Did you have that feeling? Was it was that? Did you have that sinking feeling? Well, I was hoping to see the defensive line come through. I, I was concerned that the defense might have just ran out of gas. Yeah, Mahomes was going to drive down the field, which which he ultimately did. But I, there were times where they they most of the time really in that last drive where they were only rushing three. They were trying yeah. to they were trying to double Kelsey. They're you know they're trying to you know keep any deep passes down the field, but you couldn't get any pass rush at all. And that's what the concerning. And we've talked about this, you know, quite a few times over the last few podcasts is they spent a lot of money on this defensive line. They put a lot into this. This was supposed to be, you know, the, the, the top unit of maybe the whole team was the defensive line. Yeah. And these are the situations where you want to see it. You mm-hmm. want to see these stars perform and go out and put pressure on the quarterback when you know they're throwing situations. And we really haven't seen it in these last second drives. You haven't seen this great defensive line go out and put pressure on the quarterback and go win the game, go put the game away with with your pass rushers. But like you said, they're only rushing three, so do you really expect that? Which which tells me that he doesn't trust it. Okay. Which is what I'm thinking. He doesn't trust that 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 defensive line is going to get the pressure. And you had uh, Quandre Diggs go down, so you know, and you already you're already without Slay. Yeah, and Ford went down on fourth and eight. You had to be. Uh, I know that's the one that, that that's a play that, that really the the if the Lions were ready to jump over that threshold and really start being like a winning team, they would have found a way to 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 stop that fourth and eight. And, I, it and, was different you know, for me. I thought that they would stop them, and the reason I did was because. After that play where we did fumble, we'll talk about later, and that they ran back for a 100-yard touchdown, we came back and scored. You don't see the Lions do that. Normally that's like then we get blown out after something like that. They came back, they took the lead, and, and, you know, you know Mahomes is always going to have a chance. But I thought that we could stop them and win that game. And I I feel that because how how. Great was that game. How like it was so back and forth, and it was and it really it wasn't two bad teams having a slugfest and just looking ugly. Mm. Like it was not like if, if you take if you looked on on paper or 
if you were looking at at the schedule and you saw, okay, the Chiefs are playing at the Lions and then uh, at one o'clock, or you got Saints Dallas on Sunday night in New Orleans. Which game is going to do? Just think in your head is going to be more exciting. Probably even with Breeze out, you probably still think. Wow, Rams, like the way Dallas is playing, New Orleans, they got a lot to prove. Games are always fun, you know, when they're in New Orleans, man. There's just a vibe there. Detroit, you know, oh, we, you know, you, you tied Arizona. You should have beat them. You, you know, you beat, you know, you barely beat Philly. You barely beat San Diego. And they were both, those, both, both those teams were hurt. You're a six-point underdog. But man, that game was, dude. It was the game of the day, man. I mean, there was a lot of, there was some good football, but the Lions Chiefs was a hell of a football game, and and the Lions played really, really, really good, and it made it made me excited to be a Lions fan again. It, it really did, and I and we do this every year, and we sporadic, you know, what, however we do it. Being a Lions fan is a Lions fan. Did this one, like, you guys, like, were you not just, like, hung on every play and mm-hmm. honestly believing that we were going to make the play? Yeah. And then, and, the, and then somebody would. Justin but, Coleman but, would make But in the play. end, they didn't. Yeah, and I'm going to bring yeah. everybody wow. down there because I keep wow. hearing all. Wow. I hear everybody. Well, you, it's no, there's no moral victories in the NFL. This one you, kind they of lost, was, though. At the end of the day, they lost a home game that they had the lead with with two minutes left. Yeah. They lost it. They fumbled yeah. twice inside the five. Come on, Dan. Line. Let they me lost get my the banner. Game. Let me get my banner, Dan. They lost the game. <laughs> At the end we of the day, they lost. We almost beat the Chiefs. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit, do you remember where you were when you almost beat Pat Mahomes? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, you are right. You are right. We did end up losing the game. Yeah, and, the and that's where it does kind of it breaks my heart. But this one didn't break my heart as much as some <laughs> some other ones, you know. And I feel I feel good about the fact that this team played with heart, and I don't think they're a broken team. And they got a bye week to f- figure some things out, and then you go to Lambeau. You got a bye week and an extra day. But this game, so, and let's just like the tie, is going to come back to haunt them. It's going to come back to haunt them. We we had a similar you know podcast. We had a similar podcast a couple of years ago when they lost to the Falcons in Golden Tate. Yeah. We thought it was a touchdown. They ended up taking it away. They ended up losing that game, right? But at the time, they went into that game. They were three and zero. So they went right. up. They were three and one. Went to a bye. Yeah, they would have been four. Look, yeah. man, I and guess, then they ended up missing the playoffs. Listen, no, they're, they're, they I, ended up missing the playoffs I'm, because I'm of that game. Yeah. There, there's two. Um, there's two teams out there right now that I guarantee have have uh, podcasts about their team right now. They're having the same exact conversation, conversation, and that's in Philly and that's in San Diego. Because they're both probably like, I can't believe we lost to the Lions. We were in the playoffs last year. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have lost those games. The NFL is crazy like this. I mean, so you, and we'll now probably yeah. lose to a couple teams that we should beat. To even it out. That's uh, I mean, look, it happens every year. Look, there's going to be a lot of teams that are nine and seven, eight and eight, seven and nine. Yeah, and the Lions are probably going to be one of those teams. Yes, yeah. when they have an opportunity to possibly not be. So how that's you, what I'm saying. Like you can't just say, "Well, at least they played close against a really <laughs> no, well, good football no, team." You, okay. No, they blew a game at home that they should have won. Yes, but but they. They are, are well, we are two, two one, and one, one and one, going into which is the a five, decent yeah. record. And and the national, the national pundits now, man, the the, the power rankings those, are all in thirteen. They don't going know. Up. They don't know any more than any of us do. <laughs> every, hey, every, and and every, everybody watches football, and everybody that watched that Lions Chiefs it changes game week saw to week. a decent. It football changes team. week to week. You know, the guy from know. Sports Illustrated has us at four now. You know how uh, everybody thought the bear, <laughs> everybody thought the guy that said he was three and thirteen. Oh, and, yeah. and everybody thought four, the Bears were absolute four. trash after week one. Then they went three straight. It's a week to week league. Yeah. It's not necessarily change their okay. opinion. Okay, well, the four and zero Patriots almost lost to the three and one Buffalo Bills. Who who's so the Patriots are good because they won the game, and, and the Bills are bad because they lost. The Bills beat the Bills are three and one. They they they've beaten the, the Jets and the Giants, and then I I, I don't even remember who they beat. another bad team. I think it was Washington, maybe I don't even remember. But and they played a really good game, but lost 
to the Patriots. What what where would you put the Bills? Are the Bills really good and on the upswing cuz they're 3 and 1? They beat the Bengals. Uh, another crappy team. Yeah, they <laughs> beat so I'm just saying so like there's a lot of people that are really excited about the Bills right now. But they haven't really beat nobody. I'm saying it's okay to be excited about this win, even though this wins, a win. they wins lost. are wins and losses. Yeah, but they didn't lose. Lose. Yeah, they did. They lost the game. They lost. It's a loss. They lost the game at home they with an opportunity to win. Good, and they, 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 as a team, they have a week to collect themselves and get healthier. And they look and, and guys got hurt and, and other guys were stepping up. You saw a really good fo- a really good team play a really good football game. I saw a good football team on that field. And four weeks in What I'm excited about is week, the depth. I, I feel like we have more depth than we've had in the past. With those injuries to still stay close to that type of team, I feel like our depth is is good. So that's what I'm excited about. That I feel like we are a better team than we thought at the beginning of the year. I still don't think we're going to win the Super Bowl. I still think we might just barely miss the playoffs. But it, it's exciting because I feel like we have more depth and we're better than we thought we were. I think that's kind of what Tom's saying. I, I just get frustrated because it feels like the main talk that I've seen on message boards and radio and everything the last couple of days has been, one, the referee screwed the Lions, which is absolute garbage. Yeah. Okay? And number two, oh, the Lions are a great football team because they played a close game with the Chiefs. They lost. I'm yeah. sorry. It was a home game that they had an opportunity to win, and they blew it. Yeah. They blew it. They fumbled yes. twice inside the five-yard line. They yep. blew the game. Yeah, they scored only three points having inside the five three times. Yeah. They only scored three points. And they lost a touchdown. <laughs> Going back the other way in one of the more wilder plays you'll see. But Which look, is a problem, is the red zone. There's problems, but these are problems that can be fixed. Like, carry on Johnson needs to understand how important it is to control the ball, and he has to understand his, his situation. He did not have to reach out that ball. Like, but yeah, you don't down. think he's going to learn? You don't think he's going to learn from that? I bet ball security is going to be his main focus. How about the way that the Lions were punching the ball out of the other defenders four or five times? I mean, that was a point of emphasis, and it worked for them. And I'm they telling had four you, four fumbles, two loss, yeah. three loss. To yeah, but they were focusing on doing it on the other side. Now there's going to be carry on Johnson. I guarantee will never do that again. You know, he will never, he's going to really understand the difference between holding the ball and, and living to fight another day, especially when, when you're right on the goal but line. But you should know that you've played, you're a professional, you've played your whole career. Awesome, man. Look, dude, he's trying to make a play. He knew he was right there. He was only like half an inch away. He know? was close, but like, let's the not, result is 14, 14 point swing. 14 well, he, swing. yeah, he, and he, and no that's way. what, that's what I'm saying. He's going to learn from this. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Why would you bench him now? You <laughs> no, want to cut? I you, you, you want to cut him? No, no. I'm not going to say he's going to learn from it. He might. I don't. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, I think he's. Gonna I don't learn know a him great personally. Deal from... he, he seems like a smart guy. You know, I don't know him personally. He seems like a smart he's guy. He's going to be a really good running back. That for that the Lions. will learn, but I don't know him personally. Either way, I did, look, and I don't want. Do you guys just... want to talk about that play and, and what we what, feel about that it? exact play? I, I tell you, I I knew it was a touchdown the, from the first. Initial replay, I, I knew, I'm like, that's a touchdown. And you I knew it was I just, a touchdown. What yeah. The, the, the carry on. The Chiefs. The Chiefs. It was a touchdown oh, for the Chiefs. Oh, for the yeah, Chiefs. Yeah. yeah. For like, the Chiefs. Okay. Like, I, knew, I knew. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, I know. Sorry. Like, yeah. Yeah. You I knew like, that. I watched that. it. I'm like, oh, my God, there's a touchdown. It, like, I did and too. And I'm like, it is for the Chiefs, not, not for the Lions. I kept yelling, no whistle, no whistle. Was no, yeah, because you didn't hear it. Usually you hear the whistle on TV. You hear it. And you could just tell the way, by the way, guys react. And then when they really broke down, I'm like, oh, my God, he's not down. Mm-hmm. The ball's getting knocked out of his hand. This dude is coming in, grabbing the ball, and he's – and Galladay touched him, but but not – he was he was up and running, and, he, and the whistle never blew. And I was like, that's going to be a touchdown. They went – they cut to commercial and all that. And I was like, oh, my God, it's going to be a touchdown. For the Chiefs, <laughs> like I couldn't believe. Yeah, you got to as Karen or as sorry as uh, Galladay, you got to make that tackle. Yes, yeah. Um, that, I mean, you got you got to listen to that whistle. You got to 
You got to play to the whistles. Just grab them and hold, hold them. Hold like, them, yeah. Do, so do they something. Make them whistle, like, like because that ref group, they they made that same mistake. Uh, first week, I think it was first week at, in Miami. They made that same mistake where they didn't. They blew it dead, and the same exact thing happened, and it wasn't a touchdown. So you got to know that as a player going in, that they're going to let stuff go like that because yeah. they're going to learn from their mistakes as well. So. You kind of got to know yeah. that as well, that they're going to let those plays. And now NFL, all those refs are doing that. They're going to let, let it play out and then go to replay and see what happens. So you got to always make those tackles yep. from now on. I know Dan had an interesting point on that. Yeah, yeah. we were talking before the show. I, I heard uh, a caller call in on uh, one of the radio shows this week said, you know, the referee should do what the, they do in the NHL, and that's, you know, be really vocal with what's going on at the play. And if the play is going on where maybe you think maybe the whistle could have been blown, like the referee's got to yell out and say, like, "Hey, play on, play on, play on." It's still, you know, you don't, you know, you know, the play's still going on because if the re- if players are standing around, they don't want to hit a guy if they think the whistle's blown because you don't want to get a personal foul in that yeah, situation they either. Hit. Yeah. So I think the referees, if they're not going to blow the whistle, at least try to be as demonstrative as possible especially to let them know that the play is still going on. Yeah, especially in a scrum like that. You know, that that's on the one yard line. You I, know? And you know, I play hockey and I was a referee and. And when I did referee, I did like when the puck was loose, I would let that I would yell loose. Or if it was off, roller hockey there wasn't offsides, but a lot of the ice hockey's will be you know off off. They'll tell you that it's offside. So I do know that communication with the ref and the players. But you know, like we said before, none no refs do that in football. So is that something that they should do now? Is communicate to the players? There's no reason not to. Yeah, is it, I no, think that's that, true. That's well, true. No, I think there's some reason not to it jeopardize the. The rule of just like like the power of the whistle, the play goes on until the whistle's blown. But yeah, in a, in a crazy situation like that, you you assume even if the guy even if it's a fumble and the guy picks it up in a huge scrum like that, yeah, you assume that the guy who picked it up is probably down. Yeah. And if you're just a receiver kind of sitting out there, and all of a sudden you see this guy pull the ball out, yeah, yeah, you saw him. You picked him up from the ground. He just so happened to not be touched by anybody, yeah, which is so and rare in a situation and, like that. Look, you're at Fort Field. That place was loud. The, you got sixty thousand people thought that was a Lions touchdown. You know how loud it was in there. You, yeah, I'm sure. They might have not even been able to hear whistles. So yeah, I don't know. True. Like I'm trying to play devil's advocate on on the other side, but there, I, I don't see a reason either. I, I do honest. like that as as a referee. Like like, like communicate with with the players. I mean, I just it's just not. No one does it, so it's hard for. For you to say that they should have done it because it's I'm not just saying like a going forward, thing. but be, no, it's a good idea. I like it. I like that idea. I think the that refs and players should communicate in yeah. all sports. I, I really do agree with that. I think Galladay made him. He because the thing that bothered me about Galladay in that moment was he recognized enough to to reach out and touch him, thinking that that would stop yeah. the play. It's like no man, you gotta you gotta know that like you could. Like, Great. Maybe you're not going to just, you know, dip your shoulder and knock him down. You know, I mean, you're not going to smoke him, maybe. But Dan made another good but point wrap earlier. Wrap him up. Wrap him up and just, you know, have a wrestling match until somebody else comes. And then they'll blow the whistle right yeah. there, you know. Make sure he he doesn't, you know, you don't got to pile drive him. Yeah. You know, but you but you can at least stop it, stop him. Make and sure, hey, him. I didn't. I don't think I hear a whistle, so you're going <laughs> to stay here with me until until I do hear one. Yeah. You know, I see what you're saying. And there's no penalty for that. He Galladay could have could have grabbed him up, and he would have never been able to run a hundred yards. It's a hard thing to think it's about because, like you say, you don't know, man. With the way these rules are, and we're gonna get into a couple of them later. I really want to talk about the. But they really got to learn that nowadays stuff. they're gonna let. When you it hit go. a guy, when you and as they should, what do you they absolutely yeah. yeah. should. They, the referees made a hundred percent the right call. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yep. It was the right call. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just a weird, unfortunate play that went against the Lions, mm-hmm. which is so commonplace. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we should what? be used to it by now. I was man. I was. I, I was on. I was on social media, man. And one of my things was, and, and this is in the third quarter. Before her, before even the fourth quarter even happened, which was a whole bunch of wild stuff. Obviously, I was like, "Wow, everything about being a Lions fan is happening in one game." <laughs> like all the emotion, all the you, you starting out as the underdog, but here's here's Ford Field rocking, and you got uh, a football team playing a really good football game against a really great team, and now things are going back and forth. Weird plays are happening, uh, but they're getting they're going back like it's just going back and forth. 
And it was, man. It was, it was, it was fun to be a Lions fan, and until it wasn't, <laughs> you know, until I was like, of course, like until it, the game ends. Yeah, uh, you just hard <laughs> over the game. And what a dig, man! What a like, what a dig that 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 it was that same dude, man. What did we say? Is it Hitchens? Oh uh, yeah, the, the linebacker with the with the guy against that, you know, the uh, the playoff game. Yeah, the playoff game yeah, in Dallas. Uh, Dallas the yeah. appearance where he the started guarding. and makes contact. Uh, At least that one, they threw a flag and then then they picked it up. This one, they didn't even throw the flag. Yeah, the, I mean, I think it could have gone either way that play, yeah. and many of the pass interference have not been turned over. They haven't, you know, called a penalty after looking at it. I think it's only happened twice so far in the four games or four uh, weeks. So. I kind of see why not doing it, especially that you used your challenge earlier. So then, if you lost that one, you wouldn't have any. Yeah. But that challenge earlier, I um, wasn't, that's a big point, man. You know, wasn't the greatest challenge. So I don't think there was any reason for it. So I, I kind of see not doing it to save it, just in case you needed it later. But it probably would have been better to challenge that one than than the play earlier. I just don't see them overturning overturning it. Just because I, think I they, seen I think worse, they would have, I think they would have overturned it. You think they would have? Really? It was definitely pass interference. I, I think I so was, too. But I I've seen other at, games. I was screaming at the TV. They should have thrown the challenge flag because it would have been first and goal from the one. But in the end, I'm glad they didn't because uh. I mean, within the, you know the situation of the game, because they ended up getting first and goal from the one anyways. Yeah, yeah. But then carry on Johnson. Fumbled. Exactly. So it but, didn't really matter. But that. they ended up getting into the same situation anyways regardless of whether they would have called it or not. Uh-huh. But at the time, I thought they should have thrown the flag because it was such a great opportunity. I thought for sure it was pass interference, number one. And number two, it gives you first and goal from the one. I mean, it's yeah. such a huge but opportunity. But I've seen worse pass interferences in games this year that they challenged that weren't overturned. So that's why I was kind of like, I don't and think there is, they're there's going such a, to. There's such a storyline with it uh, because, you know, the conspiracy theories is that, like, the the top NFL officials don't want to show up start, the refs. Start showing up the refs. They, it has to be like egregious. Like it has to be Saints. I thought that's year. what they See, would do like, anyways. I, I think that's, that's I think, how it would well, be. I think that's overblown. I I think they want to get the right calls more often than not. See, they want to get thinking, the right calls. I'm it's not because you could say that about anything that the referees make a call on. You know, if they weren't overturning anything, then I could say okay, maybe. But they overturned well, a lot of calls. Why doesn't it happen? Why why didn't Marvin Jones get his pass interference in, at the end of the game on, on the second hail mary? That's one like, thing that like, I like, well they didn't like, even like review they were, it. They no, should, they, well, they should have reviewed it at shouldn't, least. Shouldn't, shouldn't I, every well because shoot here's a topic that Under, we should think should, should should coaches get to challenge anything at any time? No, like, oh, God, no. why <laughs> why not why games. not in the last two no oh whoa oh no I mean with the two uh, oh. I'm sorry with the two challenge flags I, I did, what I'm saying is within the two minutes at least like like why is there I just why don't upstairs. coaches get to challenge things in the last two minutes? Well, they they could probably say something to the ref like hey. Can you guys look at that or something? I, I would yeah. think that they might be able to do something like that, but that's supposed to all be automatically reviewed. So, and that and that that's what bothers me because yeah, Marvin, them, that Marvin Jones, he he, that was pass interference on a hail mary play that should have been that should have been Lions ball. I, you know, I'm I'm not crying saying the Lions lost the game because of the refs. I'm saying, man, if the Lions had a challenge flag. And they could have thrown a challenge on that on the last play of the game. Why not? Why? Why is it that they don't get to challenge in the last two minutes? And and that's what I mean. I don't mean yeah, they can the just challenge game. every play <laughs> anytime. That, yeah, they'd be terrible. I don't think but, the NFL well, thought of this. I, don't... I I think it's stupid. I think it's stupid that that the NFL decides the last two minutes. Like if you because if you're holding on to your challenge flag for something really important. What's more important than the last two minutes anyway? I don't think the NFL thought about the pass interference, like reviewing it, with the Hail Marys. Hail Mary. that's, that's a problem. Yeah, because I hate 
when refs ref the score or the time, and I feel like a hail mary is refing the time. Yeah, but it's, it's never been called. Play, so it's got to be. Uh, but yeah, but it's never been know. called ever throughout. You can go back and look at every hail mary, and there's probably pass interference on every yeah. play. And it's like a so penalty, a penalty is a penalty. Man. You got to like, clean it up. You got to, especially now when you have this, you yeah. you got to start calling them or. Or tighten it up a little bit because now you're going to have this where everybody's reviewing it. Like, why didn't you call that? Why didn't you call that? This is reviewable. It's two minutes. You yeah. should be calling that. So I think they do need to look at this and do need to start calling that and not allowing them to do stuff like that. It goes into, at that point, then, if you're going to talk about the Hill Mary, man, like, if you're going to if you're gonna start calling pass interferences on Hill Marys like that, and you're getting into tricky them, category. Like, you're getting into tricky category. You're a guy to the ground that is online to have a possible Online to have an opportunity to possibly catch it over four <laughs> Chiefs players. No. That's not, the problem. Yes. No, no. There was four Chiefs players right there. Ready well, to catch then, the ball. well, then he they doesn't need there. to throw him to the ground then. They were he? there because he wasn't. He would have been right there, too. I don't... I, I I and he's a trained agree. wide receiver. Who's to say he's not going to come down with it? And and look, he there, was pushed. there was four guys in front of the Packers, dude, when, when we get to see... Uh, Aaron Rodgers is Hail Mary all the time, you know. Yeah. We, we didn't see that one against the Lions. There was four Lions around him. Nobody whipped him to the ground, and he ended up catching the ball. I don't think the they ripped him to the ground. They pushed him, which is still a penalty. He got so. knocked. Dude, Marvin Jones he got did a get... pass interference. It's, it's clear as day. If it, was, if it was the first quarter and it wasn't a Hail Mary, it would have been a pass and interference. All I'm saying is... That's what it, I don't it, like. Patricia should, at least if he has the challenge flag available... He should be able to throw it. Or at least say something. Like, hey, can you guys look at that? You know, it, maybe it's past interference. It's just, I'm, I'm telling you, you're opening up Pandora's box with that. I'm not that saying is, it's right or wrong. Really? I'm not. You, but you, if Marvin Jones... If they, have to if they, adjust they, their style. If Marvin Jones doesn't get knocked down, okay, he has to catch that over four guys. Yeah. At the and two yards. Oh, okay. I know. Then he has to break... All those tackles it doesn't and get into though. the end zone. It's been what done. Does that matter? Remember Michigan State versus Wisconsin? Keith Nichols? Th- these things have been done. It's what if football, he wants to pad man. his stats and get 50 yards? What if know? it bounces <laughs> off his head into Galladay's hands? You know? And he's standing in the okay, end zone. You don't, I'm, I'm just saying. So, okay? Now you're talking about, okay, all I'm saying he, is got bumped, he, got, he got bumped and he got knocked down. Maybe it's pass interference. Maybe not. A lot of people think it's pass interference. I, I don't know. Like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Okay, let's say it is pass interference. Okay, but still, if he if he does not get knocked down, he's still got to catch that over four guys at the two yard line. That doesn't matter. He still has an opportunity. He had an opportunity to make the play. So now, now instead of it being him catching the ball over four guys at the two yard line, breaking all the cycles, getting in. Now it's now. It's the ball on the one yard line. Yeah, it's a ball on the one yard line. That's about the difference that. between the penalty. You have to think about that as a defensive back if you want to take him out or if you want to try to try to knock it down. Let him catch it and tack. I, I don't like when they ref. I feel like that's roughing the time, and that's what I don't like about it. It's a, a, to me, it's a it's a different situation in the Hail Mary because you got guys uh, just running. Not, and there's all it's these not, defenders. Dan, it's not a free for all. The rules are still in there's still place. the rules. Yeah, I agree. The rules are the rules, and this has nothing to do with the Lions. I have always thought this way about this rule. I I don't like roughing the time or the score. It's that's what it is. That's what about what some is. of these rules, though? Like, okay, like, say I'm fighting for because I, I, I'm on the it, side. You know, that, okay. That I, I'm just, not, I just want wasn't... to finish this thought. I just want to finish this thought. Okay, you know what you're going to start getting if that is called pass interference. Huh. You are going to get guys flopping constantly in those situations. You, you bump into soccer. the guy, you bump into the guy, and you fall over and get the pass interference. That's, what and that, that's the better. A, a you have a better opportunity. A ref can no, you can't. Able to no, you can't. An NFL, you can, an NFL ref can't. will be able you to know tell a guy, guy dies. Yeah, okay. Yes. You, you can, can tell, tell when a guy dies. You can you, 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 Yes, you can. You oh can my tell God. You barely get you get bumped and you fall over. When you're running full speed and you get bumped and you fall over, that's pass interference. This, this you is, are going to get guys flopping constantly. And it's going to get exposed. You no, can, it's not. You can tell that. Oh, so. it will. Now you're getting into judgment calls, which it already is a judgment call. Well, they agreed to do it. They agreed to take pass interference and, and, and let you review it. They agreed so, to it. So yeah. they, they crossed they didn't that think threshold. Of, they didn't think about this. They didn't think about they the They crossed that threshold, but they're going to have to know. And uh, you know what? I'm just telling you, opening. I'm telling you, you know opening what? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Don't, don't let the, the two cities that are playing the football game. 
you know, take them out of the Twitter poll and but let the fan let the fans call all the all these let the things. Fans and you'll know though. <laughs> you think a fan of won't be able to watch four different angles when you get a re- and you know all oh, that guy flopped. Your he fans didn't. gonna oh, that guy just for got fantasy smoked. and money. Oh, here's <laughs> yeah, that's all they're. But it's gonna be for. half on one side and half on the other. People will tell you the truth, man. <laughs> You would you look because you Dan, you're telling me in, in a football game when you see a replay, you you wouldn't know if a guy was flopping or if if he got a penalty. I'm telling you, you're gonna you're, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get guys. They're gonna go into the the defender and fall over. If you do that, but it's see, not, it's no. extension of the arms. They're already see stuff doing like that. that. This, in hockey, I can tell when people are diving. You can. And, and, I can. And in football, you can, can tell when a guy when when a, when a you can see it, man. You could tell. Flop is one thing, but you're going to know if a guy tried. Watch soccer. Or if a guy got Watch men's not. soccer. <laughs> You'll see flopping. Oh, I didn't want to throw even some. But even. I'd still, <laughs> and it's still hard to tell for the referees the if the well, guy's flopping. Yes, it, it, it is. It's a, oh, my God. Yes, it, it is. is. Why they get calls wrong Dan, all the time? They're not tackling each other with, with pads and, and wrapping each other up. They bumped into each other. And Marvin Jones and fell down. allowed to fall. And this they're allowed to fall, so it's know. mass interference. Oh I saw so you really think you I saw I'm telling you right, right now, right now if I'm telling you right now, if they call that pass interference, if they start oh. calling this pass interference, receivers are going to be flopping. And as, co- as a coach, I would tell my receivers it's, to flop because you're, you're going to get upset. Be you are obvious. Gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna, obvious in soccer. No, it's not. Yes, I guarantee you I watch way more soccer than you guys. I guarantee it. And I'm telling you. I played soccer for 14 more years than you did. I know all about soccer. Listen. It's not even comparable. It's not. It's it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> referees get it right every single They're time. They're wearing I'm pads sorry. and helmets. I'm sorry. And referees you're not, get it right every single time. You're not allowed time. to just slide tackle to do. Most of flopping in soccer is when the side tackle occurs. And they're starting to get that right. And that's why soccer is impl- starting to implement the, the their own in- style of the instant replay. Replay, and they're having all kinds of problems with it, too. It's, but the flopping is getting a little not as bad. You can tell what's flopping and what's not. And you're telling me, like, football players are not going to just go in there and just start flopping, man. On the Hail Marys, they are. If you start calling past interference on the regular. I they will, but I think you can you can tell the difference as a referee. It's not going to be an Especially with replay. I mean, you're, you're going to see the extension. I mean, just bumping into someone's fine. I saw extension in the arms of, well, I can't remember the DB's name on Jones. So, I mean... I don't know. It's it's it would be tough either way. Either way, it's tough. But you can't just have blatant penalties just because it's the end of the game. All right, all right. Look, we're not even. We'll agree about to disagree on that. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want I don't want to see dudes start flopping. But there's already enough instant replay. Why not make instant replay somehow perfect? It'll like, never be perfect. Not perfect, <laughs> but just better. Because clearly, there's always stuff wrong. The one thing mm-hmm. I'm okay. The one th- like, I was trying to get into it is Gall- Galladay's the, the the touchdown that got taken away, the one that that yeah it, it, it moved a little bit moved a little bit as he was falling out. But he he clearly had position. It was on his chest, in his arms, between pretty much between both arms. He got two leg two feet down in the end zone, fell to his body as he, <clears throat> as his body like just absorbed the ground. He, it moved a little bit. The letter of the law says because the ball moved and, and he wasn't in bounds anymore, that's not a catch. But why, especially when you can break things down frame by frame right now, and so I'm kind of with you on this, as far as replays getting out of control. Like, man, that looked like a catch in a football game, it should, man. Uh, uh, um, like, my thing with replay is the referee should take no longer than 30 seconds to look at the camera. And if he can't make a decision one way or the other, after watching it for 30 seconds, it's whatever the call was on the field stands. Yeah, which was... There, so there should was not be... Down. There not should be three, four, five minutes breaking it frame by frame and slow mo... If you... If you if replay should only be used for the obvious missed calls. The obvious missed calls that yeah. everybody can see it. Watch it one time. Yeah, that was wrong. That was a wrong call. Dan, this is at I mean, game speed. I'm not trying to like just rehash what we just said, but what what constituted an obvious missed call then? The and pass, the, the pass interference in the Saints game last year. Uh, I, I mean, like an obvious catch, like where they, they call was Galladay's catch. Was that was that a catch? 
Not 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 by NFL. I would have flipped rules, the two, honestly. But, but as a just as watching football your whole damn life and knowing what, what what should be a catch and what shouldn't. Was that a touchdown? Well, this this goes back to a whole another thing. I don't know what a catch is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if no, that's a catch or not. I, just to you. Like like if you were just watching that football game and you didn't give a damn about the Lions like or the Chiefs or, you know, like would you have thought that yeah, that guy caught that for a touchdown? Yeah, to me that's a catch. How are we still talking about what a catch is and, and, and what, it, what, what it's not a catch? And My be- thing was I thought they were going to plead opposite because the first one I thought he had because it did move, but it looked like his arm was completely around it. It looked like he had it, you know, in his uh, elbow and yeah. in his arm. But it looked like it moved. Part it was of the moving football around. Moved it was moving around quite a bit. When I, I, you know. And then the second one, I thought his foot... He never even got a whole foot down. It does, he got his toes down. It looked like it just kind of God, oh, went the, off the last so one into the last grass. Two yeah, he got his got toes his. down. I mean, he got his toes down. Dude, I did, he, though, did he get it? Right, that one was so... Oh, you... Man, I thought they were both touchdowns. But I at first, I didn't think because it kind of looked... But once that... that uh, You could put the two replays together. They call it dirt, but it's not dirt. It's like... <laughs> what was what, the four feet? Rubber tires, I think, right? Yeah. Yep, rubber. Feels made up. So all the little rubber is kind of digging up. It was so close, though, man. That last time. But you yeah, could tell you could put the two so replays together because you could tell when they showed the replay from behind him, you could see that his his toe was touched, and then when he show, showed the replay from the front, you can see that when his toes do touch, there's they're a imba- little gap. They're in bounds. So gap. when you put the two replays together, he's in bounds. That's a touchdown. I thought yeah. they made that call right. Now the the first touchdown that they overturned and said it wasn't a touchdown, it, it goes back again. I don't know. What a catch is in the NFL. How, how like that, to me, to that, me, that's, that's a catch. That's to me, that should be a catch. Yeah, he yeah, had possession. It moved around a little bit. That's a catch. But he had it he the whole just time. Had the ball caught his, it. Like his yeah. feet were in bounds. It, the ball never hit the ground. Yeah. He always had it all mm-hmm. the way through. Yeah, it moved around a little bit, but he it established possession of it. To me, that should have been a catch. But I, to me, I thought, oh, that ball's moving. They're probably not going to call it a catch. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. Now, if you were just going to ask me, take away anything you've ever seen about. Replays and rules and all this stuff. Years if it's just whatever. just the game of football itself, yeah, it's a touch. what you've if done you, your whole yeah. life, is that a catch or yeah. not? Yeah, it's a catch. If, if we're playing on the playground, is it a catch? It's a catch. Yes. Like to me, it's a catch. Yeah. But when you start getting in the NFL frame rules, I'm like, I watched it. I'm frame. like, they're going to overrule this and say yeah. it's not a catch no. because mm-hmm. this is what I've seen in the NFL. And the NFL is ridiculous. That made yeah. me so mad, dude. But I, I, I said, like, I, I was so mad that I knew it wasn't going to be a catch because in my, in my, I'm looking at a catch. I'm looking at a touchdown, and I'm like. The way the NFL is today, this there there this is not a, a touchdown. And mm-hmm. I just I don't understand why. I'm trying to wrap yes, my head he's saying, around. They're saying when his things. feet weren't in, and he plus, was moving. With the NFL, they call it a game of inches, and, yeah. and you have to if you're out of bounds, you're out of bounds. You know, inbounds is inbounds, and that. But God, there's got to be some type of there's got to be some type of way to where that's a catch. How do you adjust the rules? You know, to to like say common sense. You know. <laughs> like the common sense says that that's a catch. He had two feet in. He's falling on bounds. He's got the whole thing on him, and he lands on it. You know, he lands on his back. It, it bobbles a little bit, and, and but he's holding the ball the whole time. They, they, yeah, he scored a touchdown, man. What I, the second one? Why I didn't think it was was I thought he, I, you did see that little bit of gap, but I feel like he didn't completely get it all the way down yeah. before. So I kind of would have switched the two if I had a choice, but it was it was, they were both close and they were both called as a touchdown on the field. So I thought both of them you couldn't overturn with what yeah. we saw. I guess that's a, I mean you got to have the rules, man, and you got to have it, you got to have some 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 set boundaries because mm-hmm. uh, man things happen so close and so quickly. But I don't know, man. All right. Oh my God, there's still so many things I could. We, we could talk about man about this Lions game because it was so freaking exciting. Like I am excited for next you know, week. The bye. Well, the bye <laughs> week. I, I, you know we don't have to see. Well, I'm sure you'll still see them, but oh, the bye weeks. Uh, the Lions won't lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The Lions will lose the, this week. It's <laughs> fair. <laughs> the, the bye weeks minus four this week against yeah. the Lions. <laughs> like, you know, just all the stupid stuff, man. Like I, you'll still see it. You'll see it. You, you know, see, you see other, but there's a lot less haters right now than there may have been, and you know, yeah. 
if, if the Chiefs came in and won 34 to 7. So I'm excited, and I'm excited for this team, man. And I think that's that's a big thing, man. And I think this team understands. Now we got to we got to start thinking about certain things. Uh, Matt Stafford was on the injury list last week, and people were getting nervous. He got a hip. I heard I, I heard it was back. Uh, these, these things flaring up. He had uh, he, he had some rough times with mobility, but man, he he played like a freaking warrior. Uh, we got to think about. Uh, Quandre Diggs, man. Quandre Diggs, uh, he, that's a huge loss if he's hurt. Well, this this bye actually comes at a good time uh, after that game. There's one more. I just want to – I don't mean to cut you off, but freaking Hawkinson, man. Yeah. Can these NFL players stop like, <laughs> leaping over dudes? People, they're, the linebackers are starting to get smart finally. And, and, Did you guys and, think he was dead? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my. I thought he had a concussion. Yeah. I mean, I it... Dude, straight on his shoulder and head, and he yeah, hit so hard. Good. I hate it. Every time a guy hurdles, I say this is freaking stupid. you got to yeah. stop doing this. Yeah. Like, it's way worse if you they hit you and you fall like that. I mean, it's not worth it. To, it, it looks cool, though. Like, it 99 looks, yeah. times out of 100, you gain maybe an extra half a yard. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a great while, you hurdle, and you maybe you get an extra five yards. Yeah. Big t- yeah, not no. if you're injured. No, I don't get it, man. Just maybe do a jump cut. You don't try to get around him. Maybe do a stiff arm. Why do you have to try to hurdle? You put yourself in such a vulnerable position. Oh, yeah. yeah like, put sure. yourself in the air like that? It looks cool, though. Come Especially, on. Buddy, That's the new thing. You I know, see I know every you're, game. Yeah, you're you trying to make an impression, man, but this is your first year, dude. This is your first few weeks in the NFL. Let's, let's We need you here out, healthy. Man. Healthy. Yeah. And now, now who knows, man? What if he got knocked silly, man? What if he like quits football and enrolls in in, in Central and starts taking classes with in, Antonio Brown now, dude? Because he's all knocked silly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, don't hurdle. <laughs> just, yeah. just play your game, man. Blow your shoulder and and take your oh. extra two three yards. You're gonna get. And how important was it for him to have been been in that game later, man? Imagine if Hawkinson could have been available for those last hail marys. I don't know, man. I, I, but guys stepped up, you know. Uh, Logan Thomas, he stepped up, man, tight end. So if Hawkinson is out, which the tight end spot has been usable but not n- not extremely important for the Lions so far. So that injury situation could be okay. Quandre Drake. Oh, no. They lose it. Hawkinson's huge, man. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, as as a as a pass catcher and as a uh, blocker. Yeah. What about Jesse James, though? You think Jesse you James? You want those two at tight end sets. Them, you want them both. You want them both, but you definitely yeah. want Hawkinson. So you can use whoever. You know what I mean? Well, you, you'll just yeah, this but guy will block a, past okay, that guy. It's not a crushing blow, though, right? It, it would hurt some. It's, it's not like it's not like if Kansas City lost game. Kelsey. Uh, it's it's. Pretty comparable. How, well, I, I only say that because Hawkins has been on my fantasy team, and I know that uh, the last couple of weeks weren't that great. Yeah, but, ha- yeah, but Hawkins, it's not, blocking. his value yeah. isn't just pass catching. Though. Yeah, he's yeah. A, it's the run block. He's a great blocker. Not just for your fantasy uh, team, Tom. Yeah. He's, he's a, good at blocking. He, he was a large reason why they got so many rushing yards. Yeah. You know, in that game. He's a great, he's a great run blocker. Mm-hmm. Losing him really hurts. So hopefully he can come back after this it's fight. It's hard as much as not having Slay. Like, Probably not. I guess if you want to start comparing, I guess I don't know. you know I don't want to start comparing injuries, but but to not have Slay or uh, Quandre Diggs in your secondary against the Chiefs and the Lions seem to they maintained the defense maintained until the last you know they still gave them twenty seven points though. I mean they played they played well compared to you know considering who they were playing, but they yeah. still mm-hmm. still gave them twenty seven points injuries, quite a few though. yards. The offense did too. I mean, the, the, the offense was. I guess I liked the fact that their guys were stepping up, man. Yeah, that's that's my you big know? thing about different it. guys were stepping up. The defensive line really started to show some, show some fight. You know, you lose your top, you know, uh, corner and safety, and and we still had we still played them well. Yeah. So that's that's my big thing. It's just depth. Yeah, we we, I feel well. like we have depth. What do you guys, how do you guys feel about Justin Coleman now? I mean, he's he started. He looked like a that, stud. He looked like a stud. Started earning money, yeah. That that that, yeah, that big pickup. Up. Yeah, he had a great game. All right, I'll, I'll say it. There's bye week. There's a dude out there in Jacksonville who's all disgruntled. 
Now would you start heating up the the trade talk for Jalen Ramsey? Now that you've seen what Coleman can do, you know what we can do without without Slay. You add in Jalen Ramsey. Now you know that perhaps you could have Jalen Ramsey and Justin Coleman. You know, go in in the future. I'm I just you, don't like people like that. You could have like all that. three Jalen Ramsey, Coleman, and Slay. I don't like going people like that this year. And if you got to let one of them go at all, people like that. That what do you mean, people like that? That uh, don't want to play for their team. Just bro, this is the NFL. You're seeing everybody doing it. I know. The NFL's turning into the NBA like with this that. stuff. Man. I don't like it. Well, what are you gonna do, man? You can't just start trading everybody. Slay held out. Yeah, I know, but he didn't hold out the season. He correct. He came into training camp and everything. Made I know noise about it. I know a little bit, but he I don't know. Just Ramsey's just too. Yeah, exactly. Like we we don't need that. Plus, we would trade. Do you? Maybe you need that though. But not only you're going to trade for him, you're going to have to sign him for a huge deal. So you're going to have to give up two draft picks plus a hundred million dollars. You know, do is that worth it for for one player? I just don't feel that. Number one shut down corner of the league. It just I know. Depends what you have to give up. You know, you're gonna like, have to give up two first round first picks. Round. Two that, first round, picks. but that's that's two out of three years. You know, I just don't like to. That's, that. that's, plus plus the money. that's what it costs, and it's too much. Plus the money, you know. But the, maybe maybe they can find out find another corner that's maybe not a first tier corner like Ramsey, but maybe a second tier. Like they run out and got Snacks Harrison for fourth round pick. Yeah, like, exactly. Know. Like that's that's you never you're not going to get that every day. But if you can find something comparable to that, maybe you give up a second round pick for for a quality yeah. corner or something. Like I think that's more what they're going to go. I don't think they're going to go and try to get Ramsey because it's too much to give up. That's a lot to give it's up. It's a lot to give up and like like Joe said you got to give him a ton of money too. And who knows if he wants to stay here. So there's just so many factors in that. Like, yeah. what I love to see Jalen Ramsey out there with Slay and, yeah, be and nice. Coleman and, and, and God, Nickel. And, like, it'd be great. But And let them just let, let them just cover the, the receivers and let your linebackers and your defensive line just go nuts on the quarterback. So just think about that. If we did trade two first-round picks, let's say we didn't have our last two. So we don't have Ragnow or Hawkinson. Where does well, no, our, our team look? But Just we, think of no, it. Look, no, look at it that we, way. We, no, you can't. You can't go no, back into the past for this because we have rag now. I'm and just we, saying, you know, like, if you lost two first round picks, you'd lose two players like that. Yeah, that you're trying four, to build your yeah, team. Yeah, three around. years from now. Not, and that's not necessarily because if you. If, if you're gonna make the, you don't make this trade unless you think you're gonna I be a playoff you, team. I think you yeah. just and if you're a playoff saw, team, no. those picks aren't gonna be you, as high. No, because what, what did you see happen this weekend? The Chiefs. Came in here as as a Super Bowl favorite, and the Lions they handled them, handled them with injuries. You start getting some guys healthy, you bring a piece in like Ramsey right now, and you got to know what's surrounding you. Our schedule is going to get easier. That that's what's been said. That was the big talk hmm. where if we can get through the first five six weeks and not not be zero and five, yeah, with with the bye week gone. I just didn't think it would cost two first round. Now, what? Look where you're at. Two, one, and one. Yeah. Look at your division. One of the toughest divisions in the league for sure. But everybody's beating each other up. Now, you got the Bears. They got a great defense, but they already had a not so great quarterback get knocked out for their second string quarterback. They're going to have some problems. Can their defense carry them? They carry them against Minnesota. They can carry them. Look at look at what a mess Minnesota is now. The wide receivers are turning on the quarterback. And the defense is going to turn on the offense very soon. This team's going to implode. You got two teams that are imploding right now, and then well, I wouldn't say the Bears are imploding. You yeah. don't, you don't think so? Well, maybe not yet, but that well, offense. Trubisky, they said Trubisky's not going to be out long term. I Number just one. read that even better. I just read that Mac three, is, three is one, excited regardless. to play despite. You know who they're okay. playing? And despite. What if Trubisky, Trubisky starts to play a little bit better? Just a little bit better. What if Stafford starts to play a little bit better? What? 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 You want to argue? That's what. This is. This is my argument. The Lions are right in the thick of this, and they proved this so far in the first four weeks. That they are right in the thick of this division. Yeah, how, how? How can you at least? It's just too much. Well, for me. What? Minnesota is so much, but Chicago and Green Bay. All three of these teams are so much better than the Lions right now. Is, is that what you're telling me? I haven't seen them play a division team yet. So it's hard for you me to You haven't seen it? Oh, you I see- also could say the Lions could be easily 0-4 right now, too. They could easily be 4-0. Okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Lions. Which goes back to the point, I don't know what they are. So yeah. I'm not giving up... Jalen Ramsey. I'm not giving up all those picks and all that money when I don't know what this team is yet. 
this team could get Ramsey and still miss the playoffs. And then you give them up two first round picks and all that money. Screwed, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what this team is yet. I don't know if it's worth to going out and get a guy like Ramsey. Was it worth it for the Bears to give up what they did for Mac last year, considering the success that they had and the situation that they're in right now? I don't know if the Lions are as good of a team as the Bears were last year. What did I, they give? They didn't give two first round, did they? they was it a first oh, and a third they, or something? They gave up the farm, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, you got that. They, I they, can look I, it I up. I think they gave um, up. Dude, they, they, they gave up picks sure was two for first round was a it? couple years, yeah. dude. Yeah. I think it was two firsts, a third, the moon, the stars, <laughs> the sun. Now, if you could give me a pass rusher like that. So you, I, you are, like, I don't think I don't think Ramsey's. Yeah, it was two first as, rounds and a third. Yeah, yeah I don't think Ramsey's yeah. as <laughs> and a six. as big of a and game changer six, yeah. as Khalil Mack was. It's going on forever. But okay, but round look round at the Bears. Round. Where are the Bears at right now? They have a dominant defense. They're not dominating the the division, and a lot of people think that they might not even be in second place or third place. Well, I just read that they're playing right uh, now, the Raiders. And Mac is excited to play them, so oh, he's they're gonna, gonna yeah. kill a car, <laughs> and they're gonna be four and one. <laughs> yeah, well, they, well, you got to go west coast though. So no, they're, they're in London. It's in London. It's in oh, London. oh, my bad. It's yeah. a London game. London. Game. That's actually gonna be pretty fun. Yeah, man, and man, dude, I, I can see Mac just. He's going he's gonna he's gonna he's kill just gonna yeah. Car, Derek Car, <laughs> <laughs> and Josh. Oh, I'm gonna sit Josh Jacobs. <laughs> Fancy alert, sit Josh Jacobs. <laughs> So yeah, it is hard to say. Like Dan said, we what haven't played any in our division, but I, I mean, the Packers lost to, you know, the Eagles. Yeah. But yeah, oh the well, Lions you never the know. Eagles I know you don't know. Are in Philly, and then the, with and then Philly had Philly all the receivers were days. out, and they still almost lost that game. Well, they had Jeffrey back. Um, no, I'm Jeffrey, saying when the Lions yeah, played, we had back, had Jeffrey back but, for but Jay, uh, Jackson. Bay. Jackson was still out. Yeah, Jackson was still out. Aguilar had to. Deal with all that he had to deal with being a social media <laughs> firestorm. <laughs> That's funny. I'm out here catching babies. <laughs> yeah, I'm catching them, unlike Aguilar. <laughs> oh man, I man, I, that was something else, though, man. So, but but this is this North Division is it's a it's good, but it, there's a lot of bad. And honestly, right now. Who's the best quarterback in the Lions division? Aaron Rodgers. By how much? A lot. Yeah, quite a Between bit. Between St- really? Yeah. You don't think Stafford's a really close second right now? Not mm, a close second, not but really. I think Matt Stafford's a very as far He's, as I like as Stafford. far as I've performance. As far as performance, really? I I think Stafford's right up there, man. How can and, and, and I mean he's having a good he's having a good year so far for sure. But it just I feel just feel like Rodgers is better overall, just how he throws the ball. He just he just still moves Aaron his Rod- wrist and it Aaron goes Rogers. sixty yards, you know. Good look, man. So to me, it's hard to. I only see a, th- a few people throw the ball like that. Well, like dude, look, it is Aaron Rodgers, but dude, Matt Stafford is playing some good football. No, he is. He's he really good gutted it out last week. Yeah, he had a good game. He's had he a really good year did. so far, and and I think. I didn't want to spring this on you guys already, but man, I really think they're gonna they're gonna take the bye week and they're gonna go. They're gonna go into Lambo. Oh man, I know. I'm dead. jumping ahead. I still got so much pain in my heart from blue, <laughs> like like am I am I drinking the Kool Aid or? Well, the, the or thing no, that sucks is we have two more weeks to f- to figure that out. I know. <laughs> Because this is another good test. Going to Lambeau. Oh, oh, going to Lambeau on Monday night? Monday yeah. night football. Aaron Rodgers. You get to see a, a, a division game, finally. Yeah, so it's it'll be an exciting game, for I sure. It, it'll be. I feel like th- that'll be a good game. It'll be, I mean, unless uh, we don't get a lot of our players back and or they get a lot of injuries, but I feel like... I feel it like is, that'll be a good game. There's these injuries, High man. High scoring. Dan, what do you think the important injuries are right now? Like, you got Quandre Diggs, uh, Mike Daniels, TJ Hawkinson, Slay. Who do we really, really need to be healthy right now? Well, Slay and Hawkinson, for sure. I, I would put Slay number one, Hawkinson number two. We'll see. I, I Slay... The concussion thing, well, both of them, really. 
you really don't know when they're going to come back. You, you would hope the concussion. I don't know if they said it was a major concussion, mild concussion, or what. But, um, I mean, it looked pretty scary. You know, I saw him smack his head, but he's a kid, man. He's going to be up. He's got a helmet. He'll be all right. He's got a bye week. I think he'll play Monday night. <laughs> what? He's got a helmet. <laughs> he's a kid. He's got a helmet. Um, it's a brain injury, Tom. Like, and, and it's a concussion All right. Sorry, now. Dr. Murphy. I forgot you, you know, I, for, I forgot that this was football. Dude, he's gonna. Like... I forgot, I for, sorry, Tom. I forgot brain surgery, brain uh, injuries brain, are no big deal yeah. anymore. No, they, yeah, they usually call them concussions. Now they're brain injuries. Look, he's Look. a football player. He's twenty two. He bounced. He's he's gonna be okay. It's it's not like turning your ankle. All right. Look, kind of it is though, man. It's not at all. Like. <laughs> I know. I like. I know it's. He's, he's got to go through but, concussion protocol. Send and, that to Tom. Send all your complaints to Tom yeah. Murphy at, at uh, gmail dot com. Look, <laughs> look. He's a football player, man. He's look. If he was a hockey player, they'd be like, "Oh, he's a hockey player. He's gonna be back next week. It's an important game." No, it's not the way it is anymore. Tom. It is. Oh. Remember how long Sidney Crosby was out? When he Almost had the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. When he had yeah, concussion no, 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 it's bad. different now, man. Yeah, I know it is. I know it is. What I'm saying is it's the, not I'm like an ankle you. injury where you, it could be swollen as all hell and you can still go out there and play because it's an ankle. But if you if you can't pass tests through yeah. concussion protocol, they will not allow you to go play. I know. I know. So I know. A, the, well, you're not like acting like it's different. Like be, That's what I'm saying. You I'm don't know you, when he's going to be able to come back. Because this one's, I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like. I bet he plays Monday night, man. They have absolutely no idea if he's going to play or not and when he's going to play again. They don't even – they test, what, Wednesdays or something? They, they start going through – I think so, yeah. Something like that. But fortunately, they have the bye week. But what I'm saying is you really – it's hard to say if he's going to be back or it not. It is not it. I know. I know. But yeah. There's no predicting and the same, It's the same like thing that. with, 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 one, I, I with Slay, think, too, because it's a, yeah, with a hamstring think, injury. Yeah. You don't want to put him out there if he's not 100% out. because yeah. you don't want him to re-aggravate it and then be out for another three, four weeks. So that's a touchy thing, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they all, man, all these football, I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying, man. It's football. You have no idea. You look at Cincinnati with A.J. Green, man. Like, you know, he's starting to get at that apex of his career, man, you know, and so now you're starting to hear about trade trade issues and stuff, man, because, because where do you balance this stuff with these injuries, dude? Like, there's like the NFL is always going to be full of injuries. Nobody goes through a whole season healthy, and you got to start balancing what, what's what's bad, what's not. I, can you play? Can you not? And then you got the doctors. I don't know, man, but the Lions, would have, I guess I felt that they really did good getting through the injuries that they dealt with against the Chiefs, and they have a whole bye week. So, so I feel really good about the, where the team stands right now because they get this time to go into a really important stretch where you go into Lambeau on Monday night, and then you got Minnesota at home. If you can win both those games, and then you get into the easy part of your schedule – the the so called easy part. There's a lot here with this football team, so I do worry. I, I do worry about where the injuries are. But every team is going to have injuries, so we, now it's, it's about the depth. It's about who can step up. So let's just let's just say this. What what is your opinion on this team right now? What do you I, think? That, what what are the Lions? Who are they right now? God, you know, I still think they're. All right, I started the season that they were eight and eight. After the first tie, I thought they were seven. <laughs> I gotta do the math. Seven, eight, one. Eight, eight, yeah, seven, eight, one. I thought they were gonna lose one. Now I think they got one more win. I think I think they're gonna be uh, eight, seven, and one. Eight, seven, and one, and be right in the mix in that NFC North because I think the NFC North is gonna be so convoluted, man. Just, just, just a big. Uh, a big jumbled mess of 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 seven and nine, eight, eight and eight, nine and seven. I don't think right so. in there, man. I, th- I think the whole, I think it's all going to be right there. I'm going to give him a couple more wins, but I don't know where to put them with the tie <laughs> because I think nine wins is too much. You know, if uh, they have so, nine, so that'd be nine, six and one. Yeah, yeah. I, but so I, I think they'd probably be more around nine, six, and one. Now I had them at seven and nine, so I'll give them two wins. So I think I'd put them more at that. 
and probably just missing the playoffs. I think they are a little bit better of a team than we thought they would be yeah. just because of the depth. So I, I would give them at this point two more wins, and that's because I had them one and three at this point. So they basically have kind of two more wins, I guess, a win and a half. Yeah, I think they're. I think at this point they're they're a wild card team that goes on the road and gets handled. Mm-hmm. Which is better than what I thought. I thought they were going to just miss the playoffs. So I, they're a little bit better than what I thought. But I'm st- I still think the jury's out on them. Like yeah, like you said, we could, they could have been they could be zero and four. They could be four and zero. Yeah, you know I think they they had two prime opportunities that they let slip through the hands. Dan, isn't the jury out on every team in the like in the NFL right now? I mean it's it's week four, but it's so like you know the Miami Dolphins are going to be are a struggle. You know the the Patriots are going to be good. Look at. Look at all these other teams, though, man. Like, you look at the Browns. Look at that. No, uh, I, look I think, at that I think we know the pa- North. We know the Patriots are going to be good. We thought they're going to be good before the season. We know yeah. the Chiefs are going to be good. We knew they were going to be good before the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We said the Saints were going to be good before the season. We still they think they're going to be pretty quarterback. good. You still, but they're still you, good. They're still going to be good. I think they're going to hang around enough until Drew Brees gets yeah. back. They won a game. They beat Dallas. I mean, to you beat don't Dallas, know what this NFL is right thought, now. No, I, we do, especially we in the good, NFC. I think we got a pretty good idea. Where you got Dallas? I, I like think Dallas. They, they win their division. Yeah, they'll win the division. I think division. they win their division. You think they're better than Philly? Yeah. I do. Yeah, I agree. I like Dallas. I you think, think they're, they're going to run away with it? Run away with it? Not from Philly, no. But they can't go, they can't the go on card. the road and beat a Saints team with a backup quarterback. Yeah. Man, who you don't care about the car. You don't think Trick Teddy... Yeah, they had a big... Teddy. Did the Saints defense shut them down? They, they had, had a couple. They had some couple turnovers, too. So what happens? What happens Man, if T- Teddy Bridgewater keeps things afloat in New Orleans and brings New Orleans? But and, and then you got these Rams. These Rams are struggling. They don't. They don't look like World Beat. They don't look like a Super Bowl team. I haven't right got now. to watch the Rams any game. They just like yet. Tampa Bay came out to L.A. and put up fifty-five. No, I know. I, I saw the score and all that, but I haven't got to watch them. But to me, that's different. <laughs> What's different? To I actually watch them to see myself. Than to just look at the three, stats. They're still three and one. No, I know they're still doing good. I mean, they did get smoked, but I think Tampa is a lot better than people think. Especially their defense is is really really good. Uh, what's the player that had eight and a half sacks? I don't know how many got this last game, but they uh, after three games, their one defense defensive uh, lineman had eight and a half sacks. So their defense is is unreal, and and then Winston is. Flighty. He can be good sometimes. He can be bad. So like, they oh, have an know. offense that is capable with their wide receivers. They just don't have a run game. All I'm saying, you're getting a lot of so shocking I can see that. results. You always every get that week. every year. Every year you're going to get that. Well, every year, every week. It's a lot more than this year. All I'm saying, the Lions, I think the Lions are a mediocre team. But, man, they played really good. And I think this, this NFC is really mediocre from mm. top to bottom. I don't see why. And especially in their division. The Lions are, I mean, they're in it, of course, right now. So we'll see, man. Bye week, get healthy. Go into Lambo on like, Monday night. I don't night. understand. Like, you, you say, well, how can you say the jury's still out? They're a good team. And then you go back and say, well, they're completely mediocre. They're going <laughs> to finish 500. What? The <laughs> jury's what? still out on, on, on all of it. On, on, the whole on the whole year. NFC. They could be completely mediocre and still, like, win the division. No, I not, not our that. division. Like, not our division. Yeah, you can. I'm, yeah. I, I'm telling you, man. What, the winner like, of the NFC North is, is not is, is not going to have any more than nine games. Nine I, wins. I'm telling you. Nine, so. nine wins will win the, the, I don't, the NFC I, North. I don't we already have all. three, two, three, and wait, what are, I just looked at it. It was uh, two teams are three and one. We're two, one, and one, and the other team's two and two. Yeah, where are you seeing that the team's going to be nine and seven? I know we. What, have a, what do you think? What do you, what do you what do you see a thirteen and three somewhere? I, for, I see for eleven. Michigan? Yeah, I see eleven, five, probably eleven and five. Probably going to win it. Who? Which team? I would say Green Bay, but I still like Chicago too. What team do I think? I don't know. Between those two, I think it'll be one of those, but I, I'm not sure. Because of Trubisky being out, and then even seeing uh, Green Bay's defense, they didn't look as good as I thought they were last game against Philly. So y- they're still out. <laughs> the jury's still out <laughs> for me. 
But I could see either of those teams <laughs> getting. I could still see any and of those team, teams. And that's what I'm saying. The team that survives that and gets a home playoff game could go on to win the NFC North. Or, I'm sorry, win the NFC and go to the Super Bowl. Possibly. As a 9 7 division winner. I would still think you need to get through Dallas and, and uh, New Orleans. But. Yeah, and the Rams. And the Rams, yeah. Who don't <laughs> look like world beaters, man. I'm telling you, Tampa Bay is their defense is good. Well, that, that there wasn't a defense. Were they? Game. It was a fifty-five forty. They put up game. ninety points. Yeah, too. But it was fifty-five forty. <laughs> yeah. game. it was just. I, I mean, sometimes you get, you was, get a game like that. Defense just was like an hour. shockingly <laughs> bad. <laughs> you, they're still good. Yeah, it was fifty-five to forty. Yeah. Let me see. There had to have been a lot of turnovers. Dude, I, was, I know I had. It was, no, it was, it a, was, wild, a, it was a wild. Mess. It was a it was wild. It was a wild last shootout. Yeah, yeah. It yeah golf had three interceptions. Winston had one. So yeah, golf had three interceptions. Yeah, and a and a fumble loss. Dude, so he, I knew they had a lot yeah. of turnovers. He put up. He, he, he had he threw for four hundred and fifty-five yards and three touchdowns though. Five hundred and seventeen. Yeah, or five hundred yards. I think and he threw the ball six times and two touchdowns. Uh, yeah. Forty-five times. Oh no, sixty-eight times he threw it. Forty-five. Look, man, it's, it's, <laughs> dude, it, it's here, man. It, like it, we're right in the, in the thick of this thing, though, and. I think at the beginning of the, of the season, we weren't really sure if we would like coming off of a six and ten, and a preseason that was less than less than like uh, the height of expectation. <laughs> you know, we we were like the preseason didn't give everybody like a warm, cozy feeling about how things were were going to play out, and then you get a tie in in Arizona. Yeah, we're, everyone was saying here uh, we are, week four yeah. with the bye. Two one and one. It's not bad, man. It's better than one and three, where I thought we'd be at. So, so we'll definitely take it. But uh, like we said, the the buy came at a perfect time. Try to get healthy, uh, then go to Green Bay on Monday night, and if we can win that game, that's huge, especially a division game. And uh, then uh, then everyone here might already start buying their Super Bowl tickets yeah. if we beat the Packers in Green Bay on Monday night. Yeah, the next two games will tell the story. Yeah, yeah, for Both sure. Both division games. Both division games, and and um, is, is it here in Minnesota? Right. The, yeah, they yeah. play Minnesota at home. That's right. So, I mean, Minnesota's tough. I mean, not with their quarterback Cousins isn't looking so great right now. Um, even with the wide receivers calling them out a little bit, but. But they're still got a good defense, and they got a run game. Cook is is looking is really good. Not at blocking. I don't know if you guys seen that, but uh, he's he's running the ball very very well. So that's concerning with the Lions with having a good defense and they can run the ball. If Cousins ever starts learning how to play again, then they could be in trouble with Minnesota. But if Cousins stays how he is, I think that's another game we can win. What do you think about Cousins? Being like like that right now, and then there could possibly be a uh, mutiny. Like a, yeah, mutiny. Like. <laughs> I I said actually, remember on like one of our first podcasts that I thought Cousins <coughs> was going to have a good year. Uh, so I am actually kind of surprised. I thought he was going to bounce back this year after being there for a second year, maybe learning the offense a little better. I thought he'd have a lot better year. Uh, he just doesn't seem to have that fire he had. Maybe once he got that huge contract, like before he had that that's fire, a, you know. That's the thing, man. Like he he always played with the with, with that anger because yeah. because he was get, get, he had a get chip on his shoulder. You know, he yeah. always had to prove himself, and then then you get that you get that contract. But I, I wonder about that because even, you hear about that all through sports, you know, like. NBA, NHL, wherever, you know, you, you hear about that stuff where when a guy's on, oh, he's on a contract here, you know, look out for him. He's, he's going to be on a tear. I draft year. fantasy that way. And, and then, and yeah, and then, then you get that contract and like things, things change. You don't. So, no. so, but sometimes too, for whatever reason, you don't fit in. It's not the right system for you. Yep. You know, it's not the right playbook. It's not the yeah. type of offense that suits him. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm just saying that sometimes that happens. Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason, maybe he doesn't click with the offense coordinator. Maybe there's just something not right. And then, you know, he starts to struggle, and that starts to snowball. Yeah. And then oh, the yeah. crowd gets on him. Yeah. And now the players in the locker room are getting on him. And it, once that starts to happen, then then you got some serious problems. Now you, yeah, yeah. You love, yeah, if you're the quarterback and you lost the team, 
So, and and that's happening. That is, that's happening this week. And that's kind of a point of no return. Thielen yeah. and Stephen, Stephon Diggs, they they're already seeing like the offense turning towards power and running. If that happens, and now not, they're losing their the player, time, the players like, start to turn on him publicly. Then the crowd feels even more ammunition to start oh, getting yeah. on him. Every yeah. time he has one now pass, juice, every time there's yeah. an overthrow, they're going to go crazy. And, and had, had, we've seen it. We ooh, know it here. Ooh, yeah. We know it, we have it happened, <laughs> happened with. Well, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm even Mitchell. going back with Ebron. Yeah, Ebron. Like, there was there yeah. came a point with Ebron. There was a point of no return. Like <laughs> he had to go, regardless yeah. of what happened. Even if he had some good games, whatnot, he had to go because every time he dropped the ball. The crowd was going to go insane. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. insane but there's such a, it. I don't know the exact contract. And I think it's contract, a similar thing that's going on with Cousins now. But Cousins, he's got to be locked in for a couple more years at least. I, I don't know the details of it, but. No, he had two years, like $45 million a year. Oh, or, or, oh, all together. Non- like guaranteed. A, or, I mean, all guaranteed. It was only two years. It, really? Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, but, um, I would like to know. I, I, I thought it was a few years. No, it was only two years. It was like two years and $45 million guaranteed. But all, all guaranteed. guaranteed. Something like that, yeah. Either way, man, I, I'm see, you're starting to see it, man. And you're really seeing it this week. That's, I guess, what I do. I, that's what I like about that. We don't see with the Lions, man. Oh no, it's you, three years worth eighty four million, fully guaranteed. Eighty four million, fully guaranteed. Yeah. And this is he's in his second year in it. Yeah. So he's got one so more he's got year. One more year. I thought it was guaranteed. two, but it's three. Uh, eighty four million, fully guaranteed. Imagine that cap hit, dude. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was guaranteed, but I was only thinking well, it was two years. Them, but doesn't mean they can't match him. Yeah, I wonder if uh, some of these Vikings fans are like watching. I'm sure they're uh, watching, they're chanting uh, the backup quarterback. New or- no, well, no, they're thinking about New Orleans. Like, why the hell did we get rid of Brid- Bridgewater oh. anyway? Yeah. Yeah, so I, hopefully that that team can implode. So that's at least one other team that we don't have to worry about. Which it seems like they're starting to head that way. If they're gonna have mutiny in the, in the locker room, yeah. So there's a lot of expectations in that from that team, man. Yeah. They're supposed to be good, and they got they got really good. They got a really good defense. Yeah, and they got they got a solid running back, and they got solid wide receivers, pretty decent offensive line, good defense. It's, and- yeah, like, there were some real expectations. That's all. That's what year. they thought. That's all they needed, though, was the quarterback because they they had that Minnesota miracle, which they they got him the year after, and they thought they were going to take that next step yeah. and go to the Super Bowl. But, but I uh, think you're looking at the that's what that's what excites me about these Lions. Even though I still think they're going to be like I think their record is going to be mediocre, but. I think they it's still. I think it's funny how you the, said it. I think the record's going to be. There is because mediocre. these guys are going to beat each other up. You know, they're going to get beat yeah. up together. Because, but you think about this: the Lions went on the road and beat Philly. Three days later, they go to Green Bay. Wait, three days later, Philly goes to Green Bay and, and beats them. And now the Lions have a full week off to get healthy, come fresh off this. This at least it has to be a, a team building moment. You know, like I said, like as in you, Dan and, and Joe, you too. You know, there's there's moral victories that that's that's BS, right? You 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 win the game or you lose the game. Like that's true, but the, there's something to be said about the way they played this week, right? And 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 you get a week to build off that, and an extra day, and then you get to go play Green Bay. On Monday night in Lambeau, where the Lions are starting to have a psychological advantage over Green Bay. Yeah, they had them for what fifty-five years. We never beat Green Bay or something on the road. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. It was. In Green Bay, like, no more than there though. But it seems like for it was a long, a lot, a lot of those, <laughs> a lot of the games that they've won recently have been without Aaron. Rodgers. Of course, of course, and, and and they were out of it. Or I think one game we took Aaron Rodgers out, but. They, and they, they they weren't the real big ones, but we beat them what, four four times, I think, right in a row, or four out of five, whatever it is exactly. They've kind of had their number for a minute. Mm-hmm. All I know is, I think I'm really excited that the Lions have get to build off this game that they had, and they get a week to get healthy, figure some stuff out, and go into because look, Green Bay, Dallas. Green Bay has to go to Dallas, and that's going to be a war of a football game. 
that's going to be two teams that are really fighting for a really important Week 5 yeah. game. You know, that could have playoff implications. That's got, there's a lot of pride. There's just, that's going to be a big time football game. And the, the Lions, the, you know, they get to watch that game, scout it, and then go into Monday Night Football in a Lambo and, and go win a football game, man. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited for this football team overall. Right now. So the Lions have four out of the last five. They've four won last... four out of the last five games yeah. against Green Bay? Actually, the, they've won the last four. Yeah, that's they've what I'm the saying. the last four games. They've won the last four, yeah. Yeah, so. But not, not, none of them have been important, <laughs> you know. But whatever, man. You they've know, put like... up 30 points each time also, so play the over. 35 to 11, 30 to 17, 31 to 23, and 31 to nothing. But they've had some bad defenses in the past. Their defense does look a little better uh, this year. But they still have another game before we play them, so you never know what can happen. They could they could have some injuries. Dude, I'm, and I'm telling you, that's going to be a war, man. Packers-Dallas, yeah. injury world. Yeah. That's that's going to be a big game, man. Mm-hmm. Is that a 1 o'clock game? You got 425 on Fox. No, well, that's a little bit more of, of a thing because that, that's a few hours later that they That'll have to be travel on. back. That'll be on TV, too. You'll yeah. definitely be able to see that game. Oh, that's the game. Yeah, that's, the game the week, that's probably the sure. game, of the, game of the day, man. Game of the Sunday. Yeah, because Sunday night and Monday don't look very good. So Who do we got? Who's, who's Indy, Indianapolis against Kansas City Sunday night. I would say if they had that luck. That could be a good game. If they had luck, I think it would be a little, little yeah. better. And then uh, Monday is Cleveland against San Fran. Why does Cleveland? That, why does Cleveland have so many? I know. Mayfield, right, I know. Mayfield turned himself into a star. I know. And, but and that's OBJ so annoying. Is a star too. So annoying. And San Francisco somehow is really excited. I can't believe San Francisco is is four and zero right now. Three and zero. They are had a buy this. Oh, week. that's right. Yeah, they had the buy this week. They're still three and zero. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they're just still among the undefeated. Unde- yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting week. It will. Week. It'll be good. And the Lions get to just sit and watch. And, and heal, heal up. Heal. And keep learning how to punch that ball out. Was that now? Did, did you guys notice that? Like, I, everybody noticed it, but just the way they... Yeah. Those details. Uh, Flowers had a, I had a nice one. Yeah. That was fun, too. All right. Um, I guess we, we won't give prediction. We got a, we got a bye week. Yeah, man, we'll wait so. till next week for that. Yeah, we'll do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we lost the game, but we're not, we're not hurt because... We got a bye week, and then we get to go into Lambeau on Monday night and really show where we're at. The Lions. This is the Lions, and this is the year, right? This is the Detroit Sports Sit Down. Peace.